In this video, we're going to talk about packets and frames, the type of information built into each, and how they're both used to transmit data across a network. It's important to know these concepts in order to understand both routing and switching. First, let's look at how packets and frames are created using the Transmission Control Protocol Internet Protocol Model, the TCPIP model. In the TCPIP model, the internet layer is where the processes of routing and IP addressing happen. In this stage, a piece of data is called a packet. IP addresses are logical, this means they're software. They're configured by you or a network process on your system. After packets are generated, they're sent down to the data link layer for processing. The data link layer is responsible for adding the MAC addresses or media access control addresses of both the sender and the receiver. MAC addresses are physical. They're burnt into the network port of a system. At this point, the data is called a frame. Let's see how this process works. In this example, we have workstations A and B trying to communicate. A is trying to send a piece of data to B. A knows its own IP and MAC address. The first thing A will do is create a packet, which contains the data that needs to be sent. Workstation A creates a packet out of that data on the network layer of the TCP IP model. To show that, I'll add a series of fields in front that contain the source IP address and the destination IP address. Since A isn't directly connected to B, the data will go through several different network devices to get there. There are a couple of switches in place and a couple of routers in the middle. Routers also have IP addresses and MAC addresses, like every other system on a network. The first thing that Workstation A will do after it creates this packet is put it into a frame and deliver it to the next hop in the route, Workstation B. The first hop between A and B is this router here. More specifically, it's this interface on the router. As we'll see later, the switches enable frame processing, but they're not considered next hops for packets. Let's give these routers IP addresses as well. The IP address of this interface is a.a.a.a, and the IP address of the second interface is b.b.b.b. Note that the destination IP is not a.a.a.a. The destination IP is always the last node or final node that you're trying to talk to. The frame adds fields in the front of the packet. This is done at layer 2 or the data link layer. These fields include the destination MAC address and the source MAC address. The source MAC address is A but the destination MAC address is the MAC address of this interface on the router, not workstation B. We have the IP addresses here, but no MAC addresses are shown, so I'm going to put the router in here. To get the router's destination MAC address, A will use the Address Resolution Protocol, or ARP, process if it hasn't talked to the router yet. It'll be able to auto-discover the MAC address. Once it's discovered, A places that field in here, and now we have a fully built frame. The frame you're seeing on top here is the frame required to get from workstation A to router 1. That frame is then sent out onto the network and transmitted across this segment. Then it's received by this interface on the router. Once the router receives the frame, it looks at the MAC address up here and sees its own. Now it knows that this frame was intended for itself. The router then removes the frame's header, which was only necessary to get the piece of data to that router. Then the router examines the packet's destination IP address. The router realizes that the destination IP address is accessible only by sending the data to router 2. So router 1 takes the exact same packet it received and puts a new frame header in the front. The source IP address and destination IP address are still there. This portion didn't change. It's the same packet that A created and sent to the router. The new frame contains the destination MAC address and the source MAC address for router 1 and router 2. This is the second hop of the journey. The first frame got the data from A to router 1. The second frame takes the data from router 1 to router 2. This is a hop-by-hop -hop mechanism. Every hop uses a different frame with different MAC addresses, but the packet information is preserved from end to end. Next, router 2 receives the data. Router 2 sees its own destination MAC address in there, and it knows the frame was intended for itself. Then, Router 2 strips off the MAC header and looks at the destination IP field. It sees that the destination IP address of Workstation B is connected to the same network it's on. 
So the final hop of the journey is to create a frame with the destination MAC address of 2222 and the source MAC address of router 2. The last frame of the journey takes the data from router 2 to workstation B. To get the data from A to B, we created one packet. Router 1 and Router 2 examined this packet as it traversed the network, but on each leg of the journey, a new frame was created to get it closer and closer. It finally made it all the way to B. In this case, one packet was encapsulated three times in three separate frames. In a real network, your final destination could be even farther away, maybe 17 hops or more. That's it for this discussion of packets and frames. In this video, we learned how packets are built and encapsulated within frames and how they move across the network.